Greetings, dear friends. Happy Vesak and happy Taurus Festival. It's very special energy. As always, in the days of distribution, following the full moon day, we meet together in our circle for the meditation for the common good. We use the high potency of the inflow of the spiritual energy coming every full moon to invoke the vision of the unfolding divine plan. Bringing our focus to one of three themes that we hold throughout our meditation during the year. Three themes that are named as prerequisites for the reappearance of the Christ. Cleaning the house of religion and politics. Implementing the principle of sharing in economic affairs and introducing the measure of peace and international affairs. We take those themes a bit wider and looking into the how each of those themes applies for a wider range of uh, all fields of human affairs. And in this cycle, cycle of Taurus, which is part of the fixed cross, we look into manifestation of the principle of sharing in the all fields of human affairs. In our preparatory meeting in the lead to the full moon, the group of custodians of purpose of our projects met together reflecting and sharing the most resonant ideas and topics of this time. And through this work, we synthesized the topic for our Taurus cycle, revealing the divine plan, becoming the planetary Ajna to build spirit into matter. So let us begin our work. And I invite Birgit to sound the statement of purpose of the meditation for the common good. Thank you, Alexander. Our purpose is to magnetize the ideas of common good, freedom, and brotherhood as the highest values of humanity at this time. We recognize and share diversity of perspectives in our group, creating a space capable of invoking, receiving, interpreting, and radiating a higher synthetic vision. We serve as an aceramic outpost, building a group bridge of Buddhic energy. We evoke the soul of humanity. We envision humanity as being the seed that is flowering. We prepare the way for the reappearance of the coming one. Over to you, Tracy. Thank you, Birgitta. Thank you, everyone, for being here today. Um, we'll begin with the seed thoughts that we received uh, from the first quarter moon meeting for the cycle in Taurus. 
these seed thoughts uh, helped to create our topic for this cycle, which again is revealing the divine plan, becoming the planetary ajna to build spirit into matter. And here are the seed thoughts. We lovingly trust as we eternally build. Sharing our heart and mind brings love wisely to the masses. From St. Julian of Norwich. All shall be well, and all manner of things will be well. The disciple teaches principle by what he is and by giving all of himself to all who he meets. I am come that they may have life. Jesus the Christ. The rhythm of precipitating the energy of the soul, keeping dynamic balance of every evolutionary step. When group hearts touch the divine plan, spirit reveals itself in beauty. Be kind. Shared etheric field allows shared mental focus, invokes shared vision. And finally, the collective note of the 2025 Initiative family and its component, Meditation for the Common Good, identifies with world service through sharing the field of human endeavor. Now let us move into our meditation for today. Our topic being Revealing the Divine Plan, Becoming the Planetary Ajna to Build Spirit into Matter. Let us all take a deep breath together, inhaling and then exhaling, relaxing and releasing all that we may be focused here today. Sense the warmth of our hearts as we link together. Holding our chalice up, we invoke the impressions and energies which will guide and support the common good of humanity and our planet at this time.
our intention is to be of service, assisting human and planetary life and activity as we focus together as a group in preparation to receive higher thoughts, impressions, and energies that will later be distributed at the time of the new moon. So let's begin. Let's begin by aligning to our heart center. and to our soul. And from here, aligning with the group soul. We now enter our group heart together and the heart of our chalice. And from here, we align with the hierarchy and all the unseen beings and souls who aid our invocative and evocative efforts on behalf of humanity. Let us now lead our minds and group mind into quiet receptivity to the hierarchical energies, ideas, and impressions that are especially available to us now during the full moon tide. I'd like to start today with a prayer that denotes the keynote of Taurus and its most powerful full moon, the full moon in Scorpio. This is coming from Dino 1, page 213. May the energy of the divine self inspire us and the light of the soul direct us. May we be led from darkness to light, from the unreal to the real, and from death to immortality. The full moon in Scorpio is an auspicious time working within the depths of our being and asserting its energies to assist us in destroying the ego in pursuit of the soul. Its stinger penetrates into the fabric of the illusory world of glamour to reveal to us the truth that lies within. The sun in Taurus shows us how stubbornly we dig in our heels and tightly grip hold of this world of illusion which ensnares us and creates within us the strong desire for safety and security. But the stubbornness of Taurus is no match for this powerful full moon in Scorpio. For Scorpio takes us beyond the material world as its stinger probes deep within us and reveals the truth, forcing the inner eye to open. We now see the attachments of our personality and what issues ensnare and bind us. For some, the sting of Scorpio is considered a challenge. But to those who know 
it offers great opportunity. We know that Scorpio assists the light of soul. Therefore, it is no coincidence that this particular full moon is celebrated by millions of people all over the world, known as WESAC. At this time, Lord Buddha has, is being commemorated for he helped us to open our eyes by showing us that all suffering and pain comes from our attachments. Our attachments for security, response, recognition, and new experiences. For these, are the chains that bind humanity and keep us in darkness. With the aid of the full moon in Scorpio and sun in Taurus, we, the new group of world servers, assist humanity in breaking these chains by directing the light from within. The light of truth which illuminates, heals, and guides us all on a planetary scale. It is the light of truth, which exists on all levels, that is the answer to dissolving world glamour and restoring true freedom and peace. From out of the dark, the light shines forth. Its effect on humanity will be an overwhelming feeling of hope. It will herald that the time has come whom angels and men have awaited. He will come and bring with him some of the great angels and masters and they will once again approach humanity. And with their heightened vibration and superior knowledge, they will unite their forces with those of the Christ and his disciples for helping the human race. They will teach human beings as individuals and as a race to expand their consciousness to include the superphysical, thereby the veil which divides the physical plane from the unseen world will be recognized as a fact in nature. And eventually, the separation of worlds will be destroyed as man learns to penetrate it. This, dear brothers and sisters, is the power behind the full moon in Scorpio and sun in Taurus. So let us work with the intention of our topic, revealing the divine plan, becoming the planetary Ajna to build spirit into matter. Revealing the divine plan, becoming the planetary Ajna to build spirit into matter. And let us please now reflect upon the following questions that will be posited. Our group Ajna is the lens which directs the light from the higher worlds, which pierces the veil between worlds. How can we support this process? Our group Ajna, being the lens that directs the light from the higher worlds and pierces the veil between worlds. How can we support this process?
Our next question. Our work as disciples is to light the way on the path to the kingdom of God. How will this light transform the material world into a suitable home for souls to dwell? Remembering that energy follows thought. Our work as disciples is to light the way on the path to the kingdom of God. How will this light transform the material world into a suitable home for souls to dwell? Remembering that energy follows thought. And our final question. What are some of the signposts along the path that we can see or watch for as spirit begins to transform matter on a higher octave in the physical etheric world? What are some of the signposts along the path that we can see or watch for as spirit begins to transform matter on a higher octave in the physical etheric world?
It is time now to return from the depths of our pondering as we draw together the impressions from our contemplation and allow them to take form. They may come to us as words, pictures, symbols, sound, or even color. Drawing our impressions together, we now rest in silence for a few more moments. We see our impressions flowing together into the group heart, filling our chalice and vitalizing it with radiant light, enhancing its beauty and the wisdom of its tone. Together, we direct this light upward, offering it to the hierarchy and await their blessings upon it. And now realizing our invocation today, we witness its radiance pouring downward from our chalice into the lower planes, stimulating all receptive hearts and minds. And grounding our work today and the energies we have invoked. Let us sound the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human minds. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills. The purpose which the masters know and serve. And from the center, which we call humanity, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power Restore the plan on earth. Oh. Oh.
Let us take a few more minutes allowing impressions to precipitate in the group field. I invite you to take the notes. And there is a link to the community impressions board, which is open for sharing our impressions. We now invite us to share our impressions in the circle. We will continue holding the topic throughout the next two weeks till the coming new moon. We will have another chance to meet together for the quarter moon meeting to share our impressions in this circle and uh, reflect further together on this topic. Uh, this meeting will be on May 3rd, Friday, so please take a note. And uh, the community impressions port link is in the chat, as I mentioned, but it's also now available on the homepage of our website, 2025initiative.org. So if you uh, will lose the link to the community impressions board, you can always find it uh, on the homepage. And so now I invite us to open our sharing would like to speak, please unmute yourself. And as we listen to impressions, let us continue holding our focus in the group chalice, allowing impressions to weave together and resonate, expanding our group perception of what is coming to be revealed. And here are our questions. So when you're ready, please let's start. Uh, what? What I got was the reaffirmation of our great invocation line. May it seal the door where evil dwells. And I see evil as a way that we see other people. So when we are separate, that's how I see the concept of evil. And I see fear as a dim emotional 
memory. And when we resolve conflict as humans to any, any part of nature as well, that conflict no longer will use um, violence as a means for resolution. That's what I thought. Thank you. You know, when I um, first read the subject of this gathering uh, to become the planetary Ajna to build spirit into matter, what jumped into my head is that we should align ourselves as if we are the planetary Ajna. And knowing that there is spirit in all matter to bring that into conscious awareness all the time, all the time. That that if that 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 spark of God, that that manifestation from of God is in a material form, that spirit is within everything. And that if we know this and we're consciously aware of this and bringing that to the greater consciousness of all through our awareness, that's a very powerful impression to, to, to bring to all. And it sort of goes a little bit into that same idea as our group Ajna being that lens um, because it becomes the same idea that as as we are a group Ajna, it isn't just this little group, but it is all of the groups that we know that we are part of, that we are not a part of, that exist. And in some sense, to bring that awareness into our consciousness as we look out into our world, knowing that energy follows thought, knowing that what is in our minds is a very powerful component to what we create, what we co-create, and what we have the opportunity to envision and what we will bring into manifestation. And, you know, and I, when we do the, the mantra of the new group of world servers and it ends with, um, with may we fulfill our part in, our, in the one work through self-forgetfulness, harmlessness, and right speech, I always say and thought, because we begin to have some control over what we say, but our minds and our thoughts are the most difficult ones to control in terms of what we put out there into the universal consciousness from that quiet space. Um, and I think that that is a really important part of what we do as disciples to really remember that that energy follows thought. And the signposts along the path, I think we don't have the opportunity to see how many of them there are. Um, most of us look for those signposts from the external world of media, and they definitely are not there. But if you look more deeply and you realize how much we as humanity has, has really not only begun, but has really brought to the sharing with and for others, we drop food, we bring food, we have Doctors Without Borders. There are so, so many groups that are bringing that greater common good into manifestation. And so I think there are so many signposts and we just need to remember that we may not know them all, but that they're there and to trust that they are there. 
Thank you. Good afternoon, um, this is Lynn. Um, a simple answer, I think, to some of our questions is that um, we do the work by largely by being the energy that we, we, want, to, we want to see manifest, um, just being that energy. Um, also, um, I think that um, 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 I, I listened to the recording of the last quarter moon meeting and um, listened listened really well. Uh, it, it seems like uh, we've, in, in my mind at least, I try to rely on psychology often to. Um, think about people, other people, and how people relate. And I think at this point, it's, uh, for me at least, it's become inadequate. And um, um, having having listened to the recording of the last session, it was a kind of unique experience because usually I'm involved. And I'd been away for, actually for a couple weeks and taking part in some, some other groups before I could come back. Um, I wasn't able to attend the last quarter moon, moon meeting. And, and uh, so it was kind of a unique view for me of our common good group, um, more detached than, than normal. And um, I know at that meeting, Alexander, you ask the question for Judy of uh, what characterizes our group and um, I would have to say, I, I don't want to use too many words, but that's been resting in my heart. And um, I, I got to view the quality, the energetic quality of, the, of our group. And the one word that came to me immediately about our energy um, that we're trying to bring forth in service is that it was watching our group and sensing our group, the energy was palpable. And I could use a lot of beautiful words to describe it, but that was the main one that came. It was actually palpable. And uh, um, I think I could, I could uh, say also that that even though we spend a lot of time, in a sense, analyzing, I don't think it's truly picking apart mentally analyzing. I think it's just identifying with our minds, identifying things and bringing through, of course, bringing through higher thoughts and just identifying things around us. Um, and then bringing them together bringing things together, synthesizing. I think there's a lot of that energy. But but of our working group, I think it has to be characterized by Ray too, um, because it's love and wisdom. As somebody said in that me meeting, I think Tracy, both mind and heart. It's, was, it's the love wisdom, I think, that we demonstrate as we work. Um, 
I think we're trying to lift, of course, we're trying to lift things to a new level. Uh, but it's, it seems kind of anymore to me, again, not the psychological working at every problem, but a dramatic lifting um, in a large scale. Uh, and I guess we just have to stand in place and radiate mostly. Um, hmm. I had an idea for us that we might try um, over time. And that was that at the end of each session, as we connect to other um, we connect to other groups, other working groups, um, then connect to all souls and send out, consciously send out our con contemplations. Um, send them out on the wings of thought with words intentionally and then sound the om afterwards. Um, just send out that presence that we feel. Um, Send it out. We, we've been sending it up a lot, I know, and sometimes out. But if we would do it at the end and allow the higher beings to utilize it as they will, because I think ours is more is more the essence of love, wisdom, and not so much the essence of will. And let them um, magnify it or do what they will with it, adding power as they will to what our work is. Um, I think that that would be a good activity for us. And I th also thought uh, for people maybe who are just taking part in the full moon and new moon, it seems like to me that the full moon and new moon stages of our work are more demonstration stages and the quarter moons are preparation stages. And they both they have sort of a slightly different character and they're both wonderful. And um, anyone who's interested in doing this every week, that might help to sort of um, different, differentiate the, the nature of the two, the two kinds of meetings. And I also wanted to just say another word that came to me um, as I was thinking about all of this, is that our energy in a way is so delicate. It's powerful, but it's so it's it's also delicate. And um, um and I think I think that's important. And I think it shouldn't be discouraging in any way. And I think that we're feeling our way along, we're sensing our way along, we're thinking our way along. And um, as, as we all know, the hierarchy will do with it what they need to do um, and bring it to some good. Um, thanks, everybody. Love to all of you. Thank you, Lynn. Um, just a quick note to follow up. Um, the quarter moon meetings are open to everyone to attend. So if you would like uh, to join the preparatory meeting, let us know and I will include you in our list. Uh, what's uh, we call the custodian of purpose of the project uh, group. So uh, please just uh, let us know. And the invitation to the second quarter moon meeting uh, goes to everyone who attends the full moon. So you will receive the invitation uh, for May 3rd uh, meeting. Over to you, Jacqueline. Um, one thing I was, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. 
Um, one thing I was reflecting about on these questions is the sense of being aware of not only the purpose, our percent purpose of our personality and service to the planet, but also what to ask more deeply and to reflect more deeply on purpose as the purpose of our soul life, the purpose, what is the purpose even to take on this big question, what is the purpose that the masters know and serve? That phrase, the masters know and serve. So, um, that's something that I, I'm reflecting about the word purpose for us to reflect on our own purpose of the, our soul in relationship to other souls, but also to reflect on the relationship of purpose of the masters, as well as how it comes down into humanity. What is the purpose that we can serve and how can we as group souls, group conscious souls, serve that higher purpose, as well as possibly thinking and reflecting, of course, about our own life of the personality and its purpose in this lifetime. Thank you. Thanks, Jacqueline. Uh, when you said that, what came to me about purpose, what is the purpose? What's the purpose for everyone? What's the purpose of the masters? And of course, you know, we, I personally don't know, obviously, but, but what came to me was for every, everybody and for the masters and for this planet and anybody who's born on this planet or within our solar system, it would be part of the purpose, I think, would be bringing love into consciousness on all levels. And I think that's why humanity plays such a, a vital role in this. It, it's all about consciousness and our solar logos, who is love. It's all about bringing consciousness uh, the consciousness of love on all levels. And we know that just as we perform yoga to help lift our energies from lower chakras to higher chakras, our uh, solar logos is the heart chakra. Therefore, the solar logos is trying to push up the energies from the heart to the Ajna center, which is serious. That's why they say, I think it's the fifth initiation or the fourth, I can't remember which right now, um, that when you take that initiation, you take your first initiation also on Sirius, which is the Ashna center of the greater being and whom we all live, move, and have our being, and that our solar logos is the heart chakra in that being, Sirius being the Ashna center, so... I don't know if that makes any sense or helps in any way, but that was a very good question that you put out there. Thanks. Annette, uh, I could see your microphone was un unmuted, but we couldn't hear you. Who are you speaking to? Uh, to uh, Annette. Annette um, maybe one of these days we have to get uh, together with you and, and maybe we'll try to fix your problem because I know it's been an ongoing issue for you, Annette, with the, your uh, microphone. It would be good to hear your voice. Uh, alternatively, you can write what you wanted to share and we would read it.
I would like to share this one quote that's uh, following up your question, uh, Jacqueline. Um, it's the quote that really has been in, in the my meditation for the last couple of months. Actually, Judy shared it with me several months ago and as she was preparing a paper on Shambhala. And it just resonated for so many thoughts that's been uh, coagulating in our group field. So, and the Ajna Center of the Lord of the World is just beginning to express itself in a recognizable manner through the new group of world servers. This intermediate group between the hierarchy and humanity is a carrier of the energy which makes the plan possible. The plan of which the hierarchy is the custodian. This plan implements the purpose and later when the new group of world service is organized and is recognized as a living organism, it will definitely receive energy from Shambhala in a direct reception via the hierarchy. So the purpose, yeah, it's a very high level of reception and the purpose is held in the Sham in Shambhala. And uh, when hierarchy meditates on the purpose, that's when the, the vision of the plan, plan becomes more tangible. And then when the new group of all service of which we are the part meditate, we get our sense of the plan. So it's this. chain of precipitating impressions and uh, in a way when we think about our individual purpose it's following the, this analogy what's expressed in this quote is probably it's in our moment and it's sometimes in a distant future or maybe for some of us not so distant, uh, when we will reach the monadic consciousness, we will be able to touch that sense of the purpose. And yet, for us now, where we are now in our evolutionary journey, it's always that magnet that's hold our focus and it's the magnet for our soul because the soul made it addresses to the monad in own meditation thank you for bringing this question Jacqueline. Uh, that's what I was thinking earlier, the purpose is the plan. The plan is love and light. From the great invocation. And so love and light is expressed in many, many ways, which we all know. Thanks. I will read what Annette shared in the chat. I think that what we are doing is building the Antakarana. I know not what to do oh, with a microphone. <laughs> really sorry. Yeah, so let us uh, get outside of uh, this meeting and try to fix your issue. I will email you Annette and we'll coordinate. Thank you for sharing. Uh, hi, 
Jill here. I tend to be a list person, and so I've done the old one, two, three. Um, for question one, um, I think we can make ourselves magnetic for people by setting an example in the way we live. Um, in this time, we can show no fear so that people are reassured more about there is a future for them. And number two, there needs to be peaceful cooperation and love for all and a meditation for the end of conflict and separateness. Number three, people will start to show more intelligent selection of leaders and humanity will lose the, um, the will to acquire more and more material um, possessions and they will strive more for justice, peace, and love for all kingdoms. And I think this is gradually starting to happen now. Thank you. There speaks of an avatar synthesis in the reappearance of the Christ 93 through four. With the aid of the Christ and the Lord of the world, something which has yet no name. It is neither love nor will as we understand them. Only a phrase of several words will bring us to something of the meaning this phrase is the principle of directed purpose. This principle involves three things, understanding, intuitive and spiritually instinctual, but intelligently interpreted of the plan as it can be worked out in the immediate future by the Christ and his disciples. Two, focused intention, based upon the above and emphasizing an aspect of the will hitherto undeveloped in man. Three, capacity to direct energy through understanding and intent towards a recognized and desired end, overcoming all obstacles and destroying all that stands in its way. This is not the destruction of forms by force, such as we have seen imposed upon the world, but a destruction brought about by the greatly strengthened life within the form. In the seventh ray teachings, it speaks that the plan, restore the plan on earth, is literally stored in the mineral kingdom, bringing spirit into matter helps transmute and release that plan that is already here, stored within the etheric substance of matter. To strengthen that life within that form so that it can release and rise up through the kingdoms into the world of humanity's consciousness. Working with the Ray Seven, as we are training ourselves to do, then naturally we have to develop its opposite, Ray One, where we bring in a dynamic fashion, spirit down into matter, releasing and restoring that plan. Working through the avatar synthesis, and there are groups that it is said that 
will learn how to step aside from their physical bodies and allow themselves to be channels of the overshadowing avatar of synthesis. Are we perhaps one of those groups? Learning understanding, capacity to direct energy in a focused spiritual intention. Thank you, Tracy. What oh, Tracy doing, Darcy? How Ponte? Ah, thank you, Darcy. I think it is um very. It's not important. Is not on the word. I think it's um. It's a very important important hint that you are giving us. Um, I think it, 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 to me, the restoration of the plan is one of the parts of that is raising the dead body of humanity. That is, um, revitalizing the etheric. And, uh, so in the sense that we will stop using this vitality of the lower kingdoms to offset our lack of vitality. And instead we actually, as human kingdom, will serve as a conduit of that vitality of the higher energies into those kingdoms. And for that, the, the the capacity to of sensitivity and really like evolving our matter of each subplane, etheric levels of each subplane is one of the greatest challenges, I feel. But the seventh ray is coming and it, it will bring that for us. And the first, first ray that we receive through the seventh will, that will, that will come. So I think it is the task of our group at least to address that. And if we can, to get to the practical aspect of that work. Method of dynamic purpose. Of course, it is a very, uh, I wouldn't say distant, I would say that it is a, this work has a lot of prerequisites. But in my understanding, we're, we're moving towards that. Thank you, Darcy, once again. And all that, you know, that we're talking before, because it is essentially a different facets, the same. Um, or the same matter. It would be wonderful if you could um, post this quote in the community board, but uh, if you need some assistance with that, you can just send it to me and I will uh, put it in the community board. Um, just for me, it's sometimes difficult to perceive uh, by listening to this the, 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 the quotes. I prefer reading them, see them with my eyes. Thank you.
Um, this is Lynn again. Um, I've, some of you have heard me say this before, I know, um, but the mineral kingdom has made its presence strongly felt to me in the last maybe three months. And uh, for the first time, I had taken it for granted. And um, the doorway to it seems to be, um, in fact, the presence is there, like constantly, pretty much if I turn to it. But the, the uh, doorway seems to be, uh, to communication seems to be um, connecting and sending love. Just, you know, love to all beings, the mineral kingdom and all beings, that sort of thing, north, south, east and west, above, below, within, without, love uh, to all beings, to the mineral kingdom and to all beings. But once I send love, there's a connection immediately, um, a reciprocal connection, and they are sending to me also. Um, it's a sharing that is initiated by me. I'm um, sending love. The, the first time uh, I was a re receiver, but since then, in order for me to reestablish, mostly I send love to them. And um, um, the I think, as was said previously, I think that's so important that we become more inclusive, uh, consciously, um, of of all all life on the planet. I think we're trying to, and, and, and I feel so much power from the mineral kingdom that I hadn't felt before. They really are like uh, a source of power for us to hold us steady. For me, it's to hold me steady on the path and steady in my positive nature, not to be distracted by the negativity around me uh, I can, I can get a lot of support right there with that connection to hold steady in the light. Um, I think we see, we see the results of our work, the signposts, um, in, in many ways, but one way, um, there, when we see good outcomes, it is helpful. And that seems to come with synchronicity. When we're putting the work in, um, we do see good results. And somehow there's a sense of synchronicity with it. Uh, as all things work together more and more. Um, and I see it in the sense of an outcome as being a verdant world and a beautiful, joyous world. Um, thank you. I would like to just put in the word for the, uh, the plant kingdom. When we were looking at signposts along the path, the thing that, that came to me was how very beautiful the plant kingdom seems to be this year. Now, this may be just a local um, phenomenon, but the order in which the plants have come out this year has been very different to usual. A, a lot of plants have come out at the same time, the bluebells have come early. We have a lot of uh, bluebell walks organized around us and they're all for mid-May and the bluebells are in full bloom at the moment. I noticed strangely in my garden that a huge number of bluebells have come up as white bells and that has not happened before. The blackthorn seems to be uh, blooming for much longer than usual, and the uh, the candles on the uh, chestnut trees are are out early. But why I'm mentioning this is that so many people talk about it, and I think that 
what we are seeing is the etheric beginning to to shine through, to glow through the the plant kingdom, and that that people not esoteric people, but just people walking about are are noticing that nature appears different and i think it's it's giving a message to people to wake up and and look and and see this higher octave of the physical etheric world i also uh the the idea of the plant kingdom being a fairly high evolutionary level for it for itself and that the perfume of flowers is the highest manifestation of this kingdom and also for for us um, smell the sense of smell is is our highest sense and it brings with it at the higher level a spiritual discernment and discernment has something to do with this piercing of the veils and allowing us to discern the the soul and the higher finer level so that discernment and the perfume and the smell i think are also linked thank you that's happening here also helen I think it's, uh, as you said, uh, um, an invitation to people and an awakening to people. But I think it's also a result of the of the kind of work that we do. Yes, I've uh, noticed too. Um, sorry, is someone talking? I'll carry on. Um, yeah, I've noticed too when I'm out with the dog walking, I've often come back and said, oh, I've seen some beautiful plants today. Everything looks so much better than normal. And I've also been getting these split second feelings, which I can't explain to make any sense of them, but that I'm in a different dimension somehow. And I, I think, well, perhaps this is all part of what is going on at the moment. Jacqueline, would you like to share? Oh, just one other comment about the third question. Yes, the, certainly the plant kingdom and the evidence of using it more for healing, for um, medicine, etc. But also I was thinking how we are in a, in a very critical point uh, in terms of the evolution of the mineral kingdom. On the one hand, we see it as you know, even when I've gotten MRIs, I've thought about here is the mineral kingdom interacting with my body to assist me in my understanding of my own health and wellness in terms of life, you know, various mechanical things. But now I'm thinking more along the lines of artificial intelligence in the mineral kingdom, how this is operating and how we're on such an edge of using it for good or not and for um and i think all of us have a certain intuitive awareness of the possible dangers and potential and actual dangers of it with artificial intelligence and at the same time we as servers can hold that mental kingdom for its highest purpose for its highest good that we may use that in those ways as servers, because there will be a great deal of use as it already is for materialism and for control and for power. So that I think we as 
conscious servers need to be very aware of balancing those energies in the world with holding it in the highest light for the highest good of all. Thank you. Yes, as we were meditating, it's um, and this third question came uh, to our focus. It also was the first impressions that came about the plant kingdom. Uh, as this, uh, and I remember that uh, plant kingdom was the only uh, one that didn't fell off. From the law or of the law, I know how it's. Don't remember how it's exactly uh, articulated in the books, and so it stayed. Uh, it stayed with the law, and so therefore it's a sacred kingdom, the only sacred kingdom uh, that is expressed in the material uh, plane on this planet, and so that sacredness allows us to relate directly to that life principle expressed on the etheric physical plane and what we all share today is that is that our recognition of that is that actually life is so ready and especially in the northern hemisphere now where we have springtime it's just <laughs> impossible not to notice it and uh, another example of that for me came is actually what we've been witnessing in the last couple of decades with the uh, information technology revolution and uh, internet techno allowing us to become so much closer to each other. And uh, that's what we directly experience in the gatherings like this. It's our theory connectedness it's not just that we hear in each other voices and sometimes we see each other uh, video, uh, but we sense our togetherness in, in the etherical space and we sense this uh, uh, connectivity between us. It's not just uh, technological connectivity. It's a theory connectivity that emerges as a result of the technological advancement. And we are able to create together an etheric field uh, through meditation and through the power of intention and invocation. And that brings us to the first question about the group Ajna. Uh, center. It's part of this process that we can, by tuning into each other, we can create the etheric space of our group. And we can project into the subtle matter of etheric planes the energy of our own individual centers, creating group centers. It is said somewhere that any living being has seven etheric centers. And so any group that comes to that state of recognition itself as a living being starts working with the energy of etheric group centers, seven group centers. And Ajna is one of them. And when Ajna is get activated, then yes, the real magic starts happening. And yes, Ajna becomes that lens, receptive lens that can see into bo both worlds, into the world of spirit, and it can project into the world of form. Thank you, Tracy, for this really deep question.
anyone would like to share before we close our um, meeting today, please. So let us continue holding our focus on the topic, revealing the divine plan, becoming the planetary Ajna, to build spirit into matter. And let us continue sharing our impressions, either at the community impressions board or at the coming Quarter Moon meeting on May 3rd. And we will meet together for the new moon, around the new moon time to share again our impressions and offer seeds that would grow, becoming thought forms to be radiated through the power of our group focus into the mental field of humanity. And that is our service. And as Lynn suggested today, let us hold the minutes of focused silence, gathering together all the impressions that have been shared today and radiating them to the intuitive and mental field of other groups with whom we are connected as part of the new group of world servers. And may I invite you, Tracy, to sound a mantra of your choice to close our work today. Thank you. I don't think I'm going to do a mantra of choice. I think I'm going to just say, together, we all step out of the darkness and into the light. Oh.